Hi, welcome back to a new video. A few days ago, we published the RTX 5070 Ti review. And about a week earlier, I received an email by Nvidia just giving us an overview about the 5070 Ti and its features. For example, that we should expect a performance uplift over the 4070 Ti by about 30% in raster performance. They also highlighted the typical things such as multi-frame generation and updates in DLSS. They also stated, at least in the German briefing, awesome overclocking performance. What does awesome overclocking performance even mean? And then I was thinking about, you know, this card has a TDP of 300 watts. And from what I know or knew at this point, it would only allow plus 10% in power limit. And typically that means that that's the max you can expect in terms of performance. And usually it's a little bit less than what it's possible in terms of max power limit uplift. So I thought, did I maybe miss something or I don't know, is there some hidden overclocking potential or is Nvidia again promising too much? That's what we want to find out in today's video. You think your data is automatically GDPR compliant just because the server is located in Germany? It's actually not that simple. Due to the US Cloud Act, any American company can be forced to hand over data to US authorities, even if it's hosted in Europe. European providers like Hetzner on the other hand are subject to EU data regulations and are therefore not affected by the US Cloud Act. Combined with the right settings and contracts, you can ensure that your data is truly GDPR compliant. For example, with Hetzner Object Storage, you not only store your data in a GDPR compliant manner, but you can also easily scale it at any time, flexible and securely, according to your needs. You can find all information for safe and worry-free hosting by following the link in the description. For this video, we will use this ASUS RTX 5070 Ti Tough Gaming, and at least just looking at the components, the PCB, the cooler, there should be no limitation when it comes to overclocking. What is quite disappointing though is the price. At least after the launch of this card, I saw that this is here in Europe and Germany being sold for about 1300 to 1400 euros, which is already in the price region of a 5080. So it just doesn't make any sense to buy this card at this price. I would probably just wait for the prices to go down, otherwise it, it just won't make sense. Or maybe I just missed the outstanding overclocking potential. Maybe we can overclock this by plus 50% and it will be worth the money. But that's what we have to find out. In the last video, we were reviewing this RTX 5070 Ti Ventus by MSI and just placed directly next to the Tough Gaming. You can see that the Tough, tough Gaming is both longer and also wider. Also, it has bigger fans. If we just switch to the, to the Tough, so bigger fans, more surface area on the cooler means that the card can potentially run colder or we have more headroom for overclocking, which is what we want to do in today's video. Also looking at the backplate, cool thing. It's also again made from aluminum and compared to the MSI Ventus, it is also used for cooling. If we just try to look in between here, you can spot some thermal pads behind the memory for additional cooling and also I'm not sure if this is a good, a good thing. I mean, it's good that Asus is doing it, but the fact that this is necessary, that we're seeing thermal pads behind the connector, no comment. But at least just design-wise, I think this is a pretty nice looking graphics card. We want to compare the performance in 3D Mark Speedway for this. I'm just running stock performance first, so we get a baseline. In the stock condition, we see just above 77 FPS. The GPU is clocking at 2800 megahertz. Memory is clocking at 1750 megahertz. GPU temperature is just above 60 degrees Celsius at the end. So that is already or still quite cold. Same goes to the memory. Also, this is in a great area between 60 and 65 degrees Celsius. Board power draw is pretty much maxing out between 290 and 300 watts. With the current NVIDIA cards, you can pretty much modify four parameters. That is the GPU clock, the memory clock, the power target and the GPU voltage. Now we saw in 3 Mark Speedway at the end, it was maxing out already at around 300 watts, which means that it's kind of obvious that you would first try to just increase the power limit to give the card more headroom to draw more power and increase performance. We use GPU Tweak 3 for now and we increase the power target from 100 to 110 watts, which allows the card to pull 330 watts instead of the stock 300 watts. And again, we are running 3D Mark Speedway. And now we see 77.5 FPS. Now we see 77.5 FPS. 
I then closed all the tools in the background and performed three clean runs, took the average values and I could see 77.8 FPS, which is an increase of 1%. And to also give you additional information how this would translate to gaming performance, I also ran Cyberpunk. And here I could observe an increase of 1 FPS on both average and 1% lows. Interestingly, just increasing the power limit alone didn't really help. We saw an increase of about 1%. That's pretty much nothing. Even though we saw that in GPU-C, the card was showing being power limited. So I decided to move on to the next topic, which is memory overclocking, especially if we think about that with the 40th gen, like the RTX 4090, some of these cards were heavily memory limited. So that is why I want to test memory overclocking on this card, but we also have to keep in mind that this is already coming with GDDR7 memory. I then did step-by-step -step testing and quickly realized that I'm just limited by the software. We can run this with plus 4200 and it works just fine. We see an increase from 1750 megahertz to 2013 and this runs absolutely fine. So I thought, okay, if I'm limited by GPU tweak 3, let's just check the MSI afterburner. However, my curiosity quickly changed into disappointment. As you can see, this is actually less. It's only 13 megahertz less, but in MSI afterburner, I can do a max of 2000 megahertz on the memory. But of course, I was testing this again in 3D Mark Speedway and also ran it again through Cyberpunk. The 2000 MHz overclocking on the memory increases the performance in 3D Mark Speedway from 78 to 80 FPS and it also increases power consumption from 302 to 307 watts. In Cyberpunk I could only see an increase in the average FPS by 2 FPS, so increasing from 57 to 59. It also increased the power consumption slightly from 272 to 281. The good thing is that the RTX 5070 Ti doesn't seem to be memory bottlenecked, which is a good thing. It shows that the GDDR7 was the right choice. However, it is kind of disappointing that we are reaching the memory overclocking limit so early. We can pull it on both MSI Afterburner and GPU Tweak instantly to 2000 MHz and we just can't go further. So I don't know if additional memory overclocking would give us more performance, simply because we just can't increase it further at this point. I also then changed to GPU overclocking and quickly noticed the same thing in GPU Tweak 3. So also there, you quickly run into the max possible GPU clock. And that's why we have to again use MSI Afterburner because at least there for the GPU clock, we have a lot more headroom at least to what we can adjust. The max I could do, I also saved this as a profile three, is plus 346 megahertz on the GPU. And I often encountered this bug. I'm not sure where this is coming from. I had this with both MSI Afterburner and also with GPU tweak, is that the boost clock seems to just die for whatever reason. You can see, I mean, the stock clock is about 2800 megahertz, as I showed before. And now with plus 350 megahertz, basically overclocking, we can see 2200 megahertz. If I just revert back to stock, I can see 1900 megahertz. So something, I'm not sure what is causing this, had it multiple times. Whenever I had this, I just could, the only thing I could do was reboot. Now first look, it seems like everything is back to stock, but it kinda isn't. If we just look at the GPU clock, it seems rather low. GPU is at plus zero. Not sure what's going on here, but it's just not smooth. The card is now running again with plus 500 megahertz set in Afterburner, which is odd. I'm trying to hit 3100 megahertz, which passed before, but it was at a setting of plus 350. Something is bugged and I'm not sure what exactly it is or what causes this, but it shouldn't happen. You know, if I set plus 350 and I apply it and suddenly it's 200 megahertz difference, that's just weird. The GPU clock under load was about 3100 megahertz on the GPU. Memory 2000 megahertz, board power draw was between 310 and 330 watts. That's so strange, really. I spent the entire afternoon testing all of this, you know, running all the benchmarks because I always have to run it three times, take the average, I had to run 3D Mark and obviously also Cyberpunk. Now I wanted to just replicate what I was doing for hours on camera and it just doesn't work again. That, that is odd. But let's still look into my benchmark data from earlier. In Speedway, overclocking both GPU and memory helped me to achieve 82.7 FPS on average, while the card was consuming 317 watts. So that is an increased performance of 7% versus stock. And it looked very similar in Cyberpunk. 
comparing the first scenario with only memory overclocking with what we just did, so GPU overclocking and memory overclocking, it only increased the performance by one FPS in 1% low and on average. So it's very similar to 3D Mark Speedway, about five to 7% additional performance versus stock. The last thing we can tweak is the GPU voltage, which is the same as in the previous generations. It only goes from zero to plus 100%, which just on a technical level doesn't make any sense. Has been like that for a long time. It's still annoying, it's still garbage. Nobody can figure out what it actually means from zero to like plus 100%. But let's check how much it helps us to increase performance. This was the run without increasing the GPU voltage, clock about 3100 megahertz and GPU voltage between 1.025 and 1.04 under load. And here we can just pull it to plus 100%. And here we have the second run, slight increase, 84 FPS, didn't really change a lot on the GPU clock itself. You can still see the perfect cap reason is power. So we're just purely power limited in the end and GPU voltage didn't really change at all. The max I could do on my 5070 Ti TUF was 84.4 FPS in 3D Mark Speedway. So that is a performance increase of 9%. In Cyberpunk, it was even less. Increasing the GPU voltage only helped slightly on the 1% low. So that leaves us with a max increase of 7% in Cyberpunk. Obviously, we can overclock an RTX 5070 Ti. We saw plus 9% in Synthetics, so that's the Speedway, and plus 7% in Cyberpunk. But you have to keep in mind, I was only testing a very short time period. That means if you want to adjust your card for daily and having it stable, you will see less performance increase. So that might only be plus 7% in Speedway or only plus 5% in Cyberpunk. Would I call this outstanding or impressive overclocking performance? Most likely not. I would maybe at best call this average overclocking performance, but it also doesn't surprise me. I would say this is the prime example of what Nvidia is doing right now. I'm not sure what is going on, but they keep over-promising and under-delivering. What I also don't really understand are the artificial limits that we see in the software. In both MSI Afterburner and in GPU Tweak 3, we cannot push the memory further. And you also don't even think about doing it in the Nvidia app. It's still after one month after launch, it still also doesn't work. Maybe we're missing a little bit of performance here, but I think it wouldn't help us much. We're mostly also held back by the power limit. And if we keep in mind that, I mean, we have the 12 volt high power connector here. The same connector as on a 5090, capable of, at least according to Nvidia, handling 600 watts. Why is the power limit only max plus 10%? This will hold us back no matter what. Because even if we you know, had open limits or open, things to set in MSI Afterburner or GPU Tweaked 3, if we can't increase the power limit further than plus 10%, we would never see more than plus 10% in performance. It's, it's that simple. And then talking about incredible or outstanding overclocking performance just doesn't make any kind of sense. But I'm not surprised, as I said before. Maybe we will do shunt mod or something to push this further, but so far, Nvidia keeps disappointing. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.